Welcome back to the workshop, Ritual Woodworking. Today we're looking at our second part in the series on the old machinist chest full of tools. This is this belonged to Alfred Gagnon uh, from Beverly, Massachusetts. He was a tool and die maker for the uh, and made cams for the machines in the machine shop of the United Shoe Machine Company which is in Beverly, Massachusetts. He later retired to Somerville, Massachusetts. His grandson, as I had mentioned in part one, was the last owner of this and gave it to me as he was downsizing his shop. And so we'll look at, we'll continue looking through the drawers of this thing. I will show some of the tools that I showed previously that we had questions about and some of those were answered in the comments, but there are some that are still unknown. So if you haven't seen part one, go back and check that out as there are some tools in here that I have not been able to identify, but maybe you may be able to. So check that out. Okay, starting out looking at some of these items that uh, we looked at the first time and had questions about, I'll just kind of run through those real quick. Number one, we had item mystery item number one. I'll show another picture of that. This is a universal joint that the grandson's father used, um, had brought home from work, and the grandson, Ed, uh, had used in the Cub Scouts for a project, sort of a clamp on one end, you can swivel it around. And so um, it came from the use of undersea cameras, uh, and his father brought home a whole bag of them. So just a unique little item that was in the chest. Next item, these sort of these blocks that I said machinists use specifically. These are blanks uh, to be cut to whatever shape you want for cutting the head of a milling machine. So these are specific to the milling machine, as I had said before, I just didn't exactly remember why. So that's what these are for. You might remember this tin of Dill's Best Sliced fine tobacco. I had said it probably had to do with cigarettes, but this is actually for plug tobacco to put in a pipe. Certainly I, I forgotten about that option. So that's what this is for. This is for pipe tobacco. You may remember this little multi-tool like thing with the brush on it. This is for, uh, it's a tool to clean the cutting tip of a cutting torch. So anyone who does welding or that kind of work, you'll you probably know what this was. And that is, so cutting a cutting torch. And then we had a clamp. It's from Ed's father from a high school project used to cut or to clamp rubber tubing. So this is just a miscellaneous item, again, from inside the tool chest. Another tool that we looked at wasn't a mystery tool, but it was this wrench, sort of a curved wrench. And so this would have had uh, the initials FAR on it. Uh, I don't see those initials on here, but not to say they're not there. This has been through the evapor rust once, and it may need to go a little more to remove a little more of the corrosion. So this belonged to Frank Russell, which was um, a paternal grandfather of the grandson. And he was a conductor on the Burlington, Vermont trolley system. And so this is a tool that he would have used. So it really doesn't go with the history of this piece, but it still goes with the larger family history. So it's a nice older tool that was um, included with this uh, as part of its history. I should say additionally that there may be tools in here that are from the Boston and Maine Railroad system. So if you remember from the previous video, I had a couple of Ziploc bags of tap and die items. And we had some of these wrenches and there was a die wrench as well. So since then, I have taken those and gotten them matched up. So we have dies matching taps, put them together. I've got them into this container here. And the reason is, is because I want to be able to use the tap and die specifically 
on some of the projects that I do here in the workshop. So in giving me this tool chest, uh, it was suggested that I would use some of the tools, and I certainly will because uh, this is a very rich collection of items. But uh, I want to show you real quick a, an example of where I have started using some of the tools from this box. For those of you who watch my videos regularly, you will have heard about the current project that I'm working on. And so as a treat for you, you will get a sneak preview of what this thing is looking like or going to look like. Uh, and those who watch videos whenever they want to, uh, <laughs> we'll see when the video comes out, probably in October. So this is the Parthenon puzzle cabinet puzzle box that, or puzzle creation that I'm working on. I have mentioned this since the uh, Jigs and Helps part one video, I believe, is when I first started talking about it. The inside, I've got different things going on because it's a puzzle cabinet. And one of the things I had to do was I had to tap a couple holes to put some screws in for something. And I couldn't do that with, you know, the normal, there wasn't enough clearance for something like this. And even for something like this, the, you know, the smaller version of this thing, it, there was, it wasn't very easy. And so then I realized, we had these things, these tap drills that came with this. And so putting a drill bit in one of them, put a drill bit in one of them, and then a threaded tap in the other, I was able to drill two holes inside and then thread them and insert two machine screws, which you don't normally use with wood, that's usually used with metal, I was able to fit two machine screws in that were just exactly what I wanted into this thing. And so that, that was the first real use of tools from this box for a project for something that I would not have been able to do otherwise had I not had this. So thank you, Ed, for giving me this wonderful set of tools because I have used it and I continue to use it. And so this is a prime example of this. And as I said, there will be more on this. This is not completely finished. There's a few more things on the outside that I have to do. Plus, I'm going to shellac it. Um, I am, in the meantime, if I get a good sunny weekend, this weekend's raining, but if I get a good sunny weekend, I might put this outside and see if I can restore some of the purple. Of course, as you know, with Purple Heart, Purple Heart might start out purple after it's been cut down and milled and turned brown and will turn purple again. But if it's kept indoors, it will turn brown. And so it's in the process of turning brown, though I'm not sure how purple it was to begin with. I bought it at a woodcraft in Franklin, Tennessee. So with that in mind, I'm going to try to bring some of that purple back before I apply the shellac. So that'll happen probably in the next couple of weeks. So don't expect a video on this until October. Okay, let's get down to business on the machinist chest. The second drawer, we've already done the well in the first drawer in part one. The second drawer is not very exciting. Uh, it might be for some people, for me it's not, but it is usable. You know, I said that the first tools were, that were used were the tap and die set, and that's correct, but there was one day I was working on something I needed a particular tool, and I got in this drawer and got it. This drawer is full of drill bits. Lots and lots of drill bits. Going from the smallest size I can ever see, I think it's a 332nd. I'm going to guess that's what it is. Not a 116, it's a, like a 332nd. Going from that size all the way up to something like this, or even this, these are the biggest ones. Uh, they are too big for the chuck of my drill, and so I'm not really... I keep them because they're big and they're part of the tool chest, but I don't know if they're going to be of any use to me personally. There are additionally some items in here, things like... I know this is not exactly a drill, it can be more like an opener or a spacer. If you know what this is, mystery item one.
This item was actually in the well, and I forgot to talk about it, so I'm showing it here. This is mystery item two. It's sort of like a round piece that's been sliced in half, but it's got a full bottom, and it's got a tip, like a nipple tip. So, mystery item two, if you know what this is, it'll be a picture, of course. Let me know. We got another weird thing. This is mystery item three. It's almost like a stamp that you stick into a chuck. It's only a two-way chuck. It's got a, dare I say the word flathead, it's kind of a flattened raised part here, and then a round cylindrical with a stop top. So this is item number three. Really, I thought they were extended drill bits, but I think they have another purpose. purpose. These have drill bit ends, but they have a very long stock. They're really long. It's like you know, half a foot there. Uh, actually, it does have wording on it. 10, 22, 10, 24, 20. Those mean anything to you? Uh, anyway, there are these two items. If you know what these things are, or, I mean, they're obviously drill bits, but for what kind of use, I'm not sure if they go in some sort of a machine or they're for a drill. I'm going to guess they're probably for a, a, some sort of a uh, drill press or something, but let me know. And we do have, uh, and I did use this one recently. This is a threaded end for a tap, but again, it's got that long handle or that long stock that tapers down to a different size stock. Again, let me know if you know what that is. Oh, we got a spade bit in there. It's random. I'm going to guess that that was added later. It's not part of this original set. Something that is of interest to, the, to many people is this. These are, and Ed, you're going to have to remind me what these things are because I don't, can't exactly remember. Something to do with, they, you use them to precision where the drill tap goes. When you're using a drill, the drill comes through here and it's a center point or something like that. Um, check the comments because Ed will tell me what it is, I'm sure. And, um, well, here we go. It actually says on here what this thing is. This is a, well, it says Massachusetts Tool Company, uh, Greenfield, Massachusetts, USA. And in an interesting little box, there's something written in the bottom of the box. It's kind of hard to see what that is. Uh, 1,500 tools are shown, described, something about a po pocket catalog from the, oh, it's the Goodwill Pratt Company. Actually, it has a lot of very interesting things in it, so we're going to spend a little more time in the bottom drawer. Pull that out. First of all, we have a Sterrett Tool Company gauge. Decimal equivalents of number size drills. And that was just sitting in there. Probably that should go in the drill drawer, but it was in this drawer. And after I'm finished with all these videos, I'm going to start moving things around. We have a little box from the same company, Ellis Starrett. Unfortunately, this is not drill bits. This is a bunch of keys to things we don't even know what they go to. So we have some, there are some keys. And there are also these like spanner wrenches or Spacer, I, I sh I'm sure this is some sort of machining wrench. And there's a picture of all these laid out, so you could check that out. Things like this. Things you find in old toolboxes. Got a much larger micrometer. So uh, this one was not as rusty as the two that I found in this drawer. 
So I'm hoping to be able to use this. Maybe. Most interesting item in here is a magnifying glass. So we've got that original leather uh, holder with a snap. And then you've got the magnifying glass. Which is great for looking at uh, the wording on drill bits or taps or things like that. I have modern magnifying magnification equipment that I've been using for identifying everything in here. Because this is old and because the glass is sort of broken, I hesitate to really actually use it. So, but I keep it with the case because it's part of it. Some dividers or you know, a caliper here. There we go, caliper and divider. I think they're made by the same company. In fact, you could probably see these mentioned in the tool catalog that we saw in the first drawer in the other video. So I believe these are in there and this may be as well. Has patent information on it, but that is about all it's got. As in the other places, we have several different rules. Got a, probably a three inch rule here. Um, oh, here's a tiny little two inch rule. So you can, you can see that, a couple of rules. A couple levels. There's a, there's a, a, a bubble level, putting on flat surfaces. And then we have a sort of a tubular level. It's, this is from Stanley. I believe this is a Stanley. Yes, this is a Stanley number. Oh gosh, is that a 187 or 167 or 107? Gosh, the eyes, you're getting older and can't see everything. Oh, you know, if I use the magnifying glass, yeah, I was right the first time. It's a 187. So Stanley 187 level, it's got some hooks on either end. We have a lot of punches in here. I, th I assume that's what they are. Some of these punches are flat, like this one here. Like this is a standard modern punch here. Uh, another one of those. I mean, I have set of those that I use for woodworking. Big one. So, really big punch. So there are those, but then there are also, there's another sort of like that. But then there's a lot of, here's a, I, I, you know, sort of like the tapping end of a punch, but this end is like a slotted screwdriver. So is this for denting? Is this for, it does have some lettering on there. There's a lot of the, now this looks like a drill bit because it has the ends for a drill bit. There's sort of recessed portions and then the slotted bit. So a, there's a lot of that in here. I can go into all of it, but there's a lot of that stuff. This is a thread count gauge. Okay. As you know, many of you know, this is, you stick this into a hole that's already threaded to just figure out what kind of screws or threads you need. And so it's a, it's a multi-tool, it's like a multi-tool, but they're all different thread ends. A little counter of so a counter device. I don't know where it goes or what it goes with, but it actually does count and it counts based on this cylinder on the side. Or these weird spanner wrenches. Uh, this is another divider. It's very stuck together. So I really have to work to get that off. This is from the Steric company. And, uh, compass. Probably could be used for both. Or Allen wrenches. There's so many Allen wrenches in this entire um, collection. Or these aluminum tools. Lots of those. So I only, so I got another. We got, put that in. We have another divider. There's a lot of dividers in here. Which is which is good. Good to have a dividers. I have a modern set, but I certainly will use some of these because they are 
Sometimes you need multiple dividers on a project. You need to keep one at one measurement, another one at another measurement, and I have marking gauges, I have all kinds of things. And so having additional of these, especially one like this, this is a really nice one, um, that will definitely get used for sure. Mystery item here, I don't, I don't know what that is. Um, let's say mystery item six, <laughs> if we're up to that point uh, for this thing. Oh gosh, okay, let's, let's do this because I pulled this. This is another, this is a depth gauge, I'm guessing. because I, I have variations of that. Modern ones here in the shop, which are down somewhere I probably can't even get it to. Oh, there it is. And I can't pull out because it's, uh, there we go. This is the modern version. This is what came, dual chest. Uh, and this one belonged to Alfred Gangnam because it has the initials A, J, G. So, Ed, this is, belonged to your grandfather. Uh, then we have this one. This is a, another measurement tool. You turn this, and I assume this, come, this L thing moves up and down. This has a specific use. Not sure what it is. If you know, let me know. This is a nifty little tool. I don't know where we are with our mystery numbers, but let's say the next mystery number is this thing. I'm going to guess that these ends are specific to a depth gauge or maybe a wrench, because it definitely has sort of a wrench hole there. So if you know what this thing is, let me know in the comments. Oh, and one other thing I think that is of important. I'll make sure this is a piece of, okay, I think that's the same as what I'm about to show you. This item, I wasn't sure what it was, but I had one of my volunteers at work look at it. This and this are most likely going to be sharpening stones or sharpening blades, obviously. Uh, this is a triangular shaped thing. This is cylindrical. They are, yeah, you know, they both make that noise. These are for sharpening. And so important if you're a machinist, but it's always interesting to find sharpening equipment in a chest like that um, because you know they used it. Where did they throw it? Well, there it is. Here's the the other part of that triangular piece. I think it comes in a longer stick and it was broken down as you need it and you put it where you need it. So I'm going to leave those alone, leave them in the case because those are important, I think, to the documentation of the piece. If you had seen the specially plain toolbox video, which was did last year sometime, you probably remember this spoke shave. The spoke shave is part of the set of spoke shaves that are included as part of the spoke shaves that I keep in my box. This belonged to Alfred Gangnam. And so um, it kind of is the same vintage as the rest of this. And I had meant to show it at some point. And so uh, I do use it very occasionally. It's got a really sharp blade. And because of that, I want to use it on fine trim work rather than just, you know, Oak shave work. So it's a great piece. It is from uh, the Newark, New Jersey area, I believe it says. Uh, kind of hard to, to read, but I did want to include this as part of this uh, because it's the same family, the same family uh, that owned and used these tools. It's in great condition. And so I wanted to include that. And so that concludes our documentation of the Alfred Gangnam tool chest. If I come up with some extra stuff on this or I learn a little more about it, there might be a part three uh, to cover some of the tools that I didn't know what they were or I discover something new or if I acquire new things, I will certainly include those as well. And so that is the Alfred Gangnon tool chest.